all your hard work. Our fourth category today is the Islands and Seaside Award. And the six nominees come from Croatia, Australia, Niue Island, the Dutch Caribbean, Brazil, and Australia. And I'm very excited to say that the three finalists for the Islands and Seaside Award are Lika, Croatia, Niue Island, off of New Zealand, and Seba from the Dutch Caribbean. So enjoy the next video that showcases these three great stories from around the world. Mi volimo reći da se Lika nalazi u srcu Hrvatske, dakle ne možete proći s jednog kraja Hrvatske na drugi bez da prođete kroz Liku. Svi u Hrvatskoj znaju za Ličku šljivovicu, Lički krumpir, za Ličku janjetinu itd. Mi smatramo da ti proizvodi nisu dovoljno valorizirani, osobito u turizmu, i to je jedan od razloga zbog kojih smo krenuli s brendom Lika Quality, odnosno s brendiranjem gastro destinacije. Edukacija dakle, je nešto što je trajno, što uvijek na čemu uvijek radimo. I ako želimo ići u korak trendovima, a svjesli smo da to nije ni malo lako, moramo se kontinuirano usavršavati. Tako da mi educiramo paralelno sebe s jedne strane i s druge strane paralelno radimo na edukaciji proizvođača i lokalne zajednice. Dakle, o tome kako bolje pristupiti turistima, kako prezentirati što bolje svoj proizvod itd. E, volimo isto naglasiti da se kupnjom lokalnih proizvoda e, na lokalnom tržištu smanjuje emisija ugljik dioksida, e, smanjuje se ambalaža, e, dakle skraćuje se to mjesto od proizvodnje do prodaje itd. Tako da zaista e, Lika Kupiti je održivi projekt, a osim toga zapošljava se lokalno stanovništvo. Dakle, ovo je peta godina da se provodi sustav Lika Quality. Vidimo stvarno brojne pomake i u ovom smjeru nastavit ćemo raditi i dalje i razvijajući Liku kao gastro destinaciju i razvijajući Liku kao destinaciju zaštićenih prirodnih područja, odnosno kombinirajući to dvoje, jer jedno bez drugog ne ide. For those of you who are not aware, Niue is one of the smallest countries in the world, populated countries in the world. It's one of the largest raised coral atolls, so it's just a, a single rock in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So as a small Pacific island, uh, Niueans uh, migrated and found this little rock in the middle of the ocean um, by journeying from the stars. So the stars were essentially our map and our GPS. And this was thousands of years ago. Uh, and that is still intrinsically a part of our the way that we manage our natural resources. So we still depend very heavily on the sky and the stars, the moon cycles, for our hunting, for our conservation uh, methods. A dark sky nation is basically a nation that has been determined by an international authority to have a certain level of reduced light pollution. So basically it's very dark here and you have to meet some criteria um, to prove uh, that that's the case and also that you are supportive of the nocturnal biodiversity and environment that a dark country uh, without artificial lighting uh, can sustain. Some people had to change um, the lighting around their homes and their businesses uh, and so that whole discussion you know, started with um, some interest uh, and then people realized, oh, actually the benefits potentially could outweigh uh, that, that teething process. I think the other really key part of this is it allowed communities who maybe didn't have so much development in their villages um, an opportunity to be a part of the economy that um, is built around tourism quite amazing. I've been to most of the big cities around the world and I didn't realize until going there how much you miss the dark sky uh, because it's just a haze of light pollution. So I think it's quite quite a special thing to be able to share. Well, Seba is a beautiful little island in the Caribbean and just like everywhere else in the Caribbean, we have a need for water. But 
Yeah, because Seba being such a, a small island with an immense height difference, um, it's very difficult to get water up the hill, so to say. Just like many other islands in the Caribbean, we use cisterns to catch rainwater. But that can be tricky at times when there is no rain. Dry season comes around and yeah, we're stuck. So we have a solution for that. We use the seawater. It's by reverse osmosis. We have two plants that uh, produce some sort of drinkable water, but it's not up to standard. So next to this, it's always a challenge to provide the quality of water that meets the standards of drinking water, what is accepted as drinking water. So a water pipeline system has been connected, but it's not to all the individual houses. It's just pumped from down at the sea where the desalination plants are, the reverse osmosis system. It's pumped up the hill through different um, pumping stations, and it makes its way up the hill to the water bottling plant. And the fact that um, it's, it's going to be five and three gallon reusable bottles, the first set everyone will receive without any cost, just to encourage them to start using these reusable bottles. Huh? And once we start with the production, we hope to um, reduce or even remove the entire carbon footprint of all the water in, import that we do. I, I really look forward to getting this, this started and running, getting all the kinks out of the cable, so to say, and making sure that um, before the year is over, that we all can say, we're going to do much better now because we have suitable drinking water. Our third place finalist is Lika from Croatia. Our second place finalist is Seba from the Dutch Caribbean. And I'm excited to announce the winner of the 2021 Green Destination Story Award for Islands and Seaside is New Way Island. Congratulations, New Way. I loved your story. It's so interesting. All three of these stories were probably my favorite in looking at the resiliency and self-sufficiency of islands and seaside destinations. So important these days. You're looking at local food, astrotourism, and, and just the issue of water. So important, so resilient, and so inspiring. And congratulations also to all the other finalists today. Our fifth category is the co